Lu Sun's diary of a madman emerged in China in 1918, a time of significant cultural and political transformation within the country. The collapse of the Qing dynasty in 1912 during the Xinhai Revolution marked a radical departure from the past and prompted Chinese intellectuals to re-evaluate traditional norms and envision a reawakening of the nation. Lu Sun played a pivotal role as a writer, teacher, and intellectual during this era of change. It was Nikolai Gogol's short story of the same title that inspired Lu Sun to write Diary of a Madman. In Gogol's tale, the protagonist becomes fixated on his employer's daughter and descends into delusions, including conversing with dogs and believing himself to be the king of Spain. However, while Gogol's narrative focuses primarily on personal matters, Lu Sun's rendition serves as a broader critique of Chinese society and culture. This guide references the 1990 translation by William Lyell. The story commences with an unnamed narrator who returns to his hometown with the intention of visiting two brothers whom he knew in his youth. Upon arrival, he learns that the younger brother, a government official, has recovered from a dread disease and is not present. The elder brother presents the narrator with the younger brother's diary, which documents his deteriorating mental state and culminates in a psychological crisis. The subsequent sections of the story consist of entries from the diary. The diary of the madman commences with reflections on observing the moon, noting that he has not seen it for more than 30 years. Fearing ill intentions from some of the villagers, the madman admits to the need for caution. As the madman carries on with his daily activities, he perceives peculiar glances from people around him. The villagers engage in hushed conversations, their faces marked with expressions of fear. Uncertain whether these observations are mere figments of his imagination, the madman even interprets children's smiles as veiled threats. He contemplates why the villagers might hold resentment towards him, recalling a past incident in which he exploited a villager named Mr. Gu. However, he struggles to comprehend why the children, who were not yet born during that time, would bear any grudge against him. He concludes that they must have inherited this hatred from their parents. Sleep eludes the madman as he ponders the apparent animosity emanating from the villagers. Despite his extensive observations of the exploitation inflicted upon them by government officials and nobles, he has never witnessed such looks of hostility. The madman recalls a recent incident when a woman, reprimanding her child, threatened to inflict physical harm. This episode unsettles him, and Old Fifth Chen, an attendant from his family, guides him away. Subsequently, the people with whom the madman resides confine him in his room, treating him like livestock. News reaches the madman of a neighboring village, Wolf Cub Village, where famine prevails. In an act of desperation, the villagers reportedly attacked, killed, and consumed a perceived wrongdoer. It is at this juncture that the madman entertains the notion that the villagers are contemplating his own demise, possibly in retribution for his exploitation of Mr. Gu. He believes that the villagers possess an ability to find reasons to condemn a person, regardless of their righteousness, and identify flaws to justify their cannibalistic intentions. Consulting his history books, which expound notions of justice, righteousness, and morality, the madman discovers the words eat people scribbled in the margins. This discovery fuels his growing conviction that a conspiracy of cannibalism pervades his surroundings. Served a meal of vegetables and fish, the madman becomes suspicious, convinced that the fish is actually human flesh, causing him to vomit in disgust. When a doctor arrives to examine him, he questions the doctor's true motives. Overhearing the doctor conversing with his elder brother, discussing the urgency of consuming something, the madman concludes that even his own family is part of the conspiracy against him, despite his righteousness. Once again, he reflects on historical accounts of children and evil individuals being consumed. Strangely, his elder brother remains unfazed by this revelation, further fueling the madman's distrust. The madman ponders whether the townsfolk are attempting to manipulate him into taking his own life, allowing them to feast upon his corpse without having to resort to directly killing him. Even the dogs in the village appear to eye him hungrily. Contemplating the hyena, a creature that feeds on carrion, the madman draws connections between hyenas, wolves, and dogs, noting their close relation. He suggests that if hyenas can consume dead flesh, then dogs must also possess the capacity to do so. Reflecting on the evolution of species, he speculates that if humans can become cannibals, 
perhaps they can be convinced to abandon their wicked ways. Encountering a young stranger, whose face he cannot clearly discern, the madman questions the morality of cannibalism. The stranger dismisses the inquiry, asserting that aside from rare circumstances such as famine, it is implausible for anyone to be consumed. The madman recounts the tale of Wolf Cub Village, where rumors of cannibalism persist. Once again, the stranger evades providing explicit details, claiming that cannibalism has always existed. The madman believes his suspicions to be confirmed, convinced that he and everyone in the village are in imminent danger of being devoured. He believes that rather than uniting and safeguarding themselves, the villagers choose to live in cowardice, constantly consumed by the fear of cannibalism. The madman confronts his elder brother, arguing that in the past, everyone engaged in cannibalism and preyed upon one another. However, as humanity progressed and became more civilized, this savage practice ceased, except among primitive societies that continued such behavior. Drawing on the concept of evolution, he highlights how species evolve and advance to higher forms of life, striving for self-improvement. Yet, some individuals remain unchanged, resembling reptiles. Similarly, humans must strive to better themselves and abandon their wicked ways. In response, his elder brother simply smiles at him. Noticing a gathering at the gate, comprising villagers and even a dog, the madman suspects that many among them are cannibals who perceive cannibalism as an enduring norm, seeing no wrongdoing in consuming human flesh. Others, he claims, understand its immorality but refuse to outgrow their barbaric practices. Old Fifth Chin intervenes angrily at this point, attempting to lead the madman away. Undeterred, the madman urges the crowd to change, warning that if they persist in their ways, real humans will emerge and eradicate them like wild animals. Despite his pleas, the madman is ushered away by Old Fifth Chen and confined once again. From his confinement, he continues to implore, change from the bottom of your hearts. Locked away, the madman reflects on his own family history and the tragic death of his younger sister, suspecting that his elder brother devoured her. He recalls a time when his elder brother mentioned that if a parent fell ill, the child should willingly offer their own flesh for consumption. The madman interprets this statement as his elder brother, believing that the young should sacrifice themselves to sustain the older generation. Overwhelmed with a sense of defeat, he realizes that he exists within a society that has practiced cannibalism for centuries, devouring its vulnerable members. He ponders the possibility that his elder brother may have secretly fed him his younger sister without his knowledge. The madman contemplates his own role within this system of cannibalism questioning the extent of his complicity. The story reaches its conclusion as the madman contemplates the children who have yet to partake in the act of cannibalism. He firmly believes that it is both achievable and of utmost importance to save the children. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.